Romans 8, verses 13 through 15. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. You see, our earthly bodies, they have a sinful nature. However, our spirit is what's drawn to God. And so these two are in constant conflict. Your spirit wants to pray. It needs to pray. But your body, it will all of a sudden feel tired or hungry. Your spirit wants to feed on God's word. But your body suddenly remembers that your favorite television show will be coming on in a few minutes. This is the conflict that we face on a daily basis. So now you may be asking, how then do we govern this body? Well, you can't separate yourself from your body in order to walk right before the Lord. So then how do you gain the victory? Well, Galatians 5 Verses 24 and 25 say, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh. Isn't that interesting? Crucifixion was a method of capital punishment. It was torture to be crucified. For the person involved, Crucifixion involved being bound and nailed. The body would be strained under its own weight. So now that you have some understanding of the brutality of crucifixion, listen to this. The Bible says those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Crucifying your flesh is a painful process. And no, we're not talking about your flesh, the skin that's on your bones. No, we're talking about the flesh, that earthly nature. And for some people, it's torture to crucify the flesh. But when you're in Christ, that's what you do. You crucify the flesh so that you can be alive to Jesus and alive in Jesus. And so I urge you, brothers and sisters, we have to crucify our flesh daily. And this means that we have to kill our will and let the will of God reign in our lives. We have to kill our carnal mindset and become focused on the things above, not on the things of this earth. You see, a carnal mindset looks at the here and now. It's concerned with selfish pleasures, with accumulating money and wealth. But a saved mind, a spirit that is quickened, it's focused on eternity. An idol is a person or thing that is greatly admired, loved, and worshipped by someone. In ancient times, people used to make their own idols, They carved statues, crafted poles, and worshipped images made with human hands. They put their trust in objects, in things, in monuments, instead of the one true living God. Now today, we might not have idols of bronze or silver, but the idols people tend to have in this day and age are invisible idols. Idols of the heart. And you may ask how? How can you have an idol of the heart? Well, if you remember our definition of an idol, it is a person or thing that is greatly admired, loved, or worshiped by someone. In other words, whatever or whomever you put first in your life, that is your God. Whatever or whomever you honor, 
above all else in your life. That is your God. Whatever you value highly and love deeply, be careful because that is your God. A career? It can become an idol. So can money, your business, your husband or wife, or even the secret sin that you refuse to give up. These can all be idols because God, Jehovah, He should be first in our lives. He should be honored above all else in our lives. He should be the one who's highly valued and loved deeply by all of us as His children. If it's not the Lord who's first in your life, then you're in danger of making that thing or person an idol. If it competes with God for our attention and for our time, then that thing, that person, has become an idol. And we have to be careful because here's what the Bible says about idols. Jonah 2, verse 8. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Now, I don't know about you, but this scripture really puts things into perspective for me. When you cling to an idol, you're saying no to God's love. It's not that he doesn't want to shower you with his love, no. It's the fact that you have chosen to turn away from his love. Dear listener, let me tell you this. Only God can satisfy the deep longing that is in our hearts. Only God can fulfill us and give our lives meaning and purpose. So when we try to replace him with lesser things, we will always come up empty. And this grieves the heart of God. The people of the Old Testament were punished severely for their idolatry. But each time, God also gave them the chance to repent of their sin and return to him once more. And he offers that same choice to us. Idols, they can be torn down. They can be shattered. And they can be replaced with something far better. True worship of the living God. So today, I encourage you to tear down the idols in your life. Let there be no more idols, no more idols of wealth, no more idols of relationships, no more idols of worldly power. Now, join with me in prayer and let's ask the Lord to open our eyes so that we can be discerning. Let's pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to move so strongly in our lives and to destroy every evil altar that we've built in our hearts, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you in prayer today seeking forgiveness. Lord, we repent from our ways. We repent from our old sinful habits and passions. Father, in agreement with everyone listening, I ask that you would move within our hearts and in our lives. Lord, tear down every idolatrous image that we have kept in our eyes. Cast out every passion, everything and everyone who seeks to be placed above you. Lord, Remove them from our lives. Remove all idols that seek to challenge the position of Jesus Christ in our lives. We declare that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and He reigns in our lives. We declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and He rules in our lives. Jesus Christ, He is the beginning and the end the first and the last. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. It has always been about you. And it will forever be about you, my Lord. Psalm 135, verses 15 through 18 say, The idols of the nations are silver and gold, 
made by human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak. Eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. There is only you, Jehovah, Abba, Father, Elohim, the Great I Am. All other idols, all other man-made gods, they're powerless. They are dead and weak and useless, which is why our worship and adoration <laughs> is to you, the Most High God, the God who speaks truth, the God who is living and eternal, the one who holds all power and knows all things and is in all places at all times, a limitless and majestic God. To you and you alone be all glory and honor and praise. God, you're bigger and greater than anything on this earth. You alone are worthy of our attention. You deserve our affection and our devotion. Dear God, open our eyes so that we can see what is evil in our hearts and remove it. Lord, open our eyes so that we can live according to your word and be obedient to your word that says in Exodus 20, verses 3 through 6, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Lord, help us to keep your commandments. Help us and, Lord, please purge our hearts. God, I ask that you would tear down every evil altar and destroy every carved image in our hearts. God, give us eyes only for Jesus Christ. Give us minds that are focused only on Jesus Christ. And Lord, give us a strong desire to be followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak. Eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers 
upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments.'" 